Hey everyone, it's Billy Santoro here, and I'm going to talk a little bit tonight about um, a good friend of mine who has passed um, a couple months ago, um, Dave Slick. Those of you who know him um, know that he was a huge cam model and also just broke into the gay porn industry as a performer. Um... <sighs> When he died, I I shut down. I'm just gonna I'm just giving a little intro. I'm going to actually read what I wrote to kind of help me deal with this because I haven't dealt with it, and I noticed that I've been just very angry and um, really a workaholic lately, and it's just all signs of me bottling it up and not dealing with my feelings. Um, so this is kind of my way to deal with it. Um, you don't have to comment because I'm probably not going to read it because I don't read comments. Um, <laughs> but if you do um, get something from this that's positive, you can share it with me. Um, but this is mainly for me to try to work through my problems with this. Um, I, rate, I write a blog called BillyLeakedIt.com. I don't update it as much as I should. But I wrote an article basically describing what Dave Slick meant to me. And it's not a tribute. I do place blame on the straight community, the straight porn community for this. Um, that has not changed. I still firmly believe that his blood is on their hands. Um, so I'm going to read this because I also want it on YouTube. Because um, I do have some followers on YouTube and they don't read my blog. So this way everyone kind of gets to see the feelings that I'm experiencing. And... Um, here goes, so I'm just going to be reading here, and if I get emotional, just bear with me. <clears throat> the title of it's How the Straight Porn Industry Killed Dave Slick. It's no secret that Dave Slick and I were extremely close. It's pretty rare in this industry that I vibe so well with one person on all levels. I do tend to focus on work, projects, performing, the business side of the industry. I try not to feed into too much bullshit, although you guys know I stir the pot here and there. Um, I take a lot of performers and what they say with a grain of salt, um, mainly because, let's face it, most lack basic follow-through to actually follow through on what they say they're going to do. Um, Dave's death hit me really hard. Um, it hit me so hard that I went into a shell. Um, this shell couldn't be penetrated. Um, I shunned everyone who asked me about him. I shunned people who asked me about me and how I'm feeling. Um, I hated, I hated everyone overnight. <clears throat> my direction was clear. I'm going to work my ass off harder and harder, put my whole heart and soul into my work, and be successful, and just say fuck you to everyone else. And that was my attitude. Um, but after some reflection, nearly two months after Dave's death, I think I'm ready to, to face it. Um, I'm going to take you on a little journey here. Um, you guys may or may not be interested in this, but this is for me. Um, I'm making it public because maybe you can relate to it on some level. Um, but here goes. So, Dave and I met virtually on Chatterbait over a year ago. Those of you who get my humor and watch my cam shows know I talk about everything and anything. I gossip. I make jokes. I really... It's very rare you'll come to my camp show and watch me jerk off. Um, I try to let people into who Billy Santoro is and, you know, build a connection with you guys. So that's kind of what my camp shows are like. Um, so in my room, I play this game, and it was called Let's See Who's Hot. So what I do is I go to see other cam models who are broadcasting, and if they're hot, I go into their room, make small talk, and tip them. Um, well, I was looking and looking and looking, and I saw... I came across this model, Dave Slick, and he's very average looking, but he had 800 viewers in his room. So I was like, what the fuck? Why does this guy who looks very average have 800 viewers? So I went into his room and I was immediately drawn in. He manages to run his chat room from a business perspective. He would shut people down who their intention was not to be a part of that process. Just shut them down. And I admired that. Um, he would set goals, something I never do. He'd set goals for his cam show where, say, he reaches a thousand tokens. He'll get naked. 
But not just that, he would keep the viewer's eyes on the goal. So he wouldn't get distracted from the goal. Um, he said this, he used to say this thing, and it always made me laugh. He'd go, boom, 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 let's go. Boom, 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 get the goal. And I always like will associate that with him now. Um, so anyway, uh, continuing on. <clears throat> so I dropped the tokens so he could reach his goal because I wanted to see him naked. Maybe he's got a big old dick or something. I don't know. Um, and he took his jeans off and he did. He had a big dick. So I was like, okay, that's a selling point. Um, but it was deep. It was deeper than that. Um, Dave would build a connection with his viewers. It seemed like he was talking to a bunch of friends. Like he knew people in his chat room, not just in the chat room. Like he even told me after the fact that he's met some of these people. Like they are legit his friends, and that's something that you know you don't come across every day, um, especially in this industry. Um, but the reality was, no one really knew Dave. Dave was very quiet very unto himself and Dave and I used to joke that we're being in such an extra extroverted exhibitionist type industry we're both very much introverted and like to keep to ourselves um, and we don't like people <laughs> it was always a joke between us like Ugh, do you want to go out because there's going to be fucking people there um, but so Dave and I would continue to visit each other virtually and text on and off up until his death um, Dave's mind never rested. He was always, his brain was always working on what he can do next, always looking for a way to succeed, um, which I could very much relate to. He was very smart, amazing entrepreneurial spirit, and he was becoming, quickly becoming a, a very good friend of mine. Um, Dave and I never talked about sexuality. Um, I just always assumed he was one of those gay for pay guys, and I had a no problem with that because being in the gay porn industry, we work for gay for pay all the time. It's not a big deal. You know, we just don't think about it. And being in the gay porn industry too, I don't care about the straight side. I don't see the straight side. I never deal with the straight side. So we're like in our own little bubble here in the gay porn world. And LGBT, we just, we're supposed to just accept everyone. And we do for the most part. Um, but I met Dave for the first time in person at Exotica, New Jersey last year. I was working a booth for Camp 4, and he was working for my arch rival, Chatterbait. Um, we hung out a lot that weekend, and you know we did meals, coffee, conversation. Um, and then I made an off-the-cuff remark saying I didn't belong at the event because it was a straight porn event, and I just didn't feel welcome, um, which was very much true. I did not feel welcome. Um, I almost felt like people wanted to kick my ass. Um, it felt, it just felt weird to me. I didn't know whether it was because it was in New Jersey or because it was a straight porn event, but either way, I didn't feel welcome. Um, I did have a small line of gay fans who came out simply because I tweeted I was there to get photos with me, but it just felt awkward for me there. Um, Dave confided in me then that I should be happy I don't have to deal with the straight side, that he was cursed because he was a crossover performer. And, you know, at the time I scoffed at him. I'm like, whatever, bullshit. Like, you can, you have so much more financial hope because you can fuck women and men and make money from all different sides. Um, so how can that be a bad thing? And then, you know, he told me. He confided in me. He pulled up his laptop and showed me hundreds of thousands of messages threatening him to stay away from the straight women in porn, hate speech, female performers blackballing him, say they would never work with him. Agents blackballing him. He showed me text messages from straight female porn stars saying that if he works with someone who they don't even know, that the six degrees of separation will come back. And if they find out that he's fucked someone that they end up fucking, they'll have him killed. It's bullshit. Anyway, I saw the text and I just, you know, I took it with a grain of salt. I didn't think too much of it. Um, but he was definitely rattled by all that. Um, I think because I'm used to getting hate from straight up gay porn and you know I have people out there who hate me I just don't care like it doesn't bother me I've had people threaten me but I just don't care. like I don't feel like anyone's ever going to do anything I think it's just trolls behind a computer typing um, anyway let me get back to this sorry I went off on a little tangent uh, so I didn't I really didn't think there was much to it and then he we were going back to his hotel room because he had to pick something up before we went out to eat and he opened the door and there was a note slid under his door and it was basically threatening him. Um, 
and said, hold on, I'm going to read it because I wrote, I wrote it out in a blog, that if I, if I see you alone, I'll kill you, faggot. So I invited him to stay with me in my room just for his safety. Um, and I couldn't believe it. Like, people were actually following him to his hotel room. It's fucking crazy. Anyway, a month later, I flew to Arizona to do a series of cam shows with Dave. Let's face it, Dave was the best. I'm a porn performer, not a cam model. I'm not that good at camming. Um, and there is a huge difference. Dave picked me up at the airport, well, in an Uber. I don't think he drove. Um, I was so happy. Like, we were shooting the shit, talking about the industry. Um, he understood me. We really were on the same wavelength when it came to that stuff. Uh, we did three shows over the weekend. Um, Dave loved that I was comedic. Um, it was funny because I would be in the middle of doing stuff and he would just start laughing. Um, and seeing Dave laugh, it was like you were you, you had to like poke and prod him to get him to laugh. Um, but he definitely got disarmed himself around me um, and was able to do that, which I cherish. Um, and something I loved about him is that he's chill. Like nothing really bothered him. Like he could sit there and like I remember someone coming into the chat room during our show and telling me I'm old and ugly and blah 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 blah. And I was like. I was like, shut the fuck up, blah, 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 blah. I started yelling back at him. I was like, block him, block him. And Dave's like, just mute him. Let him still watch. And I was like, okay. But he, was, he gets unfazed. He's unfazed by it. Um, anyway. <clears throat> so I taught him some things, um, how to fuck on camera. Because when we did our first cam show, it was funny because the camera's like across the room. I'm like, none of your people can see this. You got to get that camera up under the balls. We need to see what's going on. So I taught him like how to how to fuck on a camera, um, which he was like, "Wow, why didn't I think about doing this?" So hopefully, it made a little better at cam shows. You can actually see it. Um, I'm I'm losing track here because I'm starting to talk. <clears throat> anyway, so he has a rescue dog, and when I got there, I had just put down. Those of you who know me know I had a dog for 11 years. Her name was Mumu. I had to put her to sleep because she was in heart failure um, a few weeks before I went out to Arizona. And I saw he has a dog named Katie, or had. And uh, I asked him, I was like, why would you rescue this dog? Like, it was a, like a, it's like a mutt, chihuahua. And he said something that, that really sticks to me to this day. He's like, Billy, you know, nobody wanted her. And nobody really wants me. So it's a match made in heaven. And I, you know, I think about that and, you know, I'm, I'm going off my little story here again, but a lot of people wanted him, you know, and I don't mean dirty. I mean, I miss him every day. I know my agent Howard misses him every day. Um, and he has some good friends, you know, that miss him. I'm sure Katie misses him every day. <sighs> I keep going off. Sorry. Anyway. Dave and I talked about business the whole weekend. Um, he told me about some of his site ideas, and I told him about some of mine. I put him in touch with my business partner to get the ball rolling. My point is, Dave was not suicidal. Dave was working on a ton of shit that was going to work. And I was excited to be a part of that journey with him. Um, one thing that we differed on, Dave loved award shows. He was the, like the X-Biz, X-Biz cam model of the year and all that crap, and I won some awards, but I never gave a shit about it. And he said something to me that now makes sense. It's validation for him. He's a crossover performer and told every day that we hate you on the straight side. And then you're given an award validating it. So he, he really sought that out. And it's sad that he had to seek that out to feel wanted. Um, he asked me once, and you guys who follow it probably know the result now. He asked me if I thought he should do gay porn. And I told him it would be a brilliant marketing deal because he's really popular in the cam world. But as I learned going into the cam world is that cam models and porn guys are not the same. Like the people who watch cams, they really just watch cams. They don't watch porn and vice versa. So I said he can get a whole new market to go watch his cam shows. So it's a brilliant, brilliant marketing ploy. So he did that. He went and signed with Falcon and started porn. So it's funny because we got really close after that. Like he would ask me advice all the time. 
Um, I remember he called me after his first shoot with Falcon, and I warned him, I warned him, Falcon does not look at the clock when they are filming. They take their good time. They are not on boner time. So you could be there eight to ten hours sometimes. Well, he clocked in 13 hours his first scene, and he said to me, Billy, you know, I understand now why you make iPhone videos. <laughs> um, anyway, so moving on. I asked Dave for some advice. Um, the APAG union, you guys, if you're a gay listener, you probably have no idea what that is. But on the straight side of the industry, they have a performer union that kind of looks out for performers' rights, that kind of shit. Well, they had reached out to me to represent the gay side of the industry. And I thought, what a brilliant idea, because I wanted to change the way testing's done, blah, 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 all this stuff. So I saw it as a golden opportunity to make an impact. Well, Dave told me flat out, Billy, you don't want to get involved with them. They, they are anti-gay. They just want you there for optics. They're not going to let you do anything. They're going to keep it exactly the way it is. And I was like, well, they seem nice. They seem nice. Well, I was wrong. They basically did everything Dave said they would do. Um, which is interesting because I didn't have any any real connection to the straight side until I joined that union, and I saw how bad it is. Basically, they think all gay people have AIDS. Not HIV. They think they have AIDS. <laughs> so it was really um, enlightening to see how uneducated the other side is. I was amazed by it. And also why Dave gets all this hate. They probably think just by him doing a gay porn, he has AIDS and he's going to infect all the women. Like that's where they – that's what they think. That's how dumb they are. Anyway, moving on. So Dave and I continued to text daily. He told me, blah, blah, blah. I already told you this stuff. Okay. Dave was getting really famous really quick, being with the top gay porn studio, one of their top performers. Um, but as you get more famous, it also attracts more hate. Um, and he got a gig at Flex Spas in Cleveland. And... Most of you who have gone to Cleveland and been to Flexbuzz know what kind of environment it is. It's a bathhouse. It's very open to the public. Well, Dave said he went to grab lunch and he came back and had a post-it note on his door basically saying, We're, I'm going to rape your whole faggot. You'll remember us, Dave. When he texted me a picture of this, I was like, what the fuck? I was like, tell, tell the manager of the spa. So he told the manager of the spa, did nothing about it. I mean, what can you do? Look at camera feeds? I don't know. There is no camera feed there. Um, so I told him to get out. Go to a hotel for your safety. Just get out of there. And then I was going to do a blog post about it, about performer safety when we do our gigs. But he, he talked me out of doing it. Um, I respect Dave's privacy. He thought maybe just by ignoring it, it would go away, which we all know that when you ignore a bully, it doesn't go away. It comes back. You have to beat that bully up in order to get it to go away. Um, but I respected Dave, and I did not post about it. <clears throat> um, shortly after that, Dave invited me to go to XBiz Miami with him. But I was all booked up. It was the end of May this past year. And I, in turn, offered him to come to D.C. during Gay Pride. Um, I thought it would be fun. We could do some cam shows, talk business. And ultimately, I missed my friend. I wanted him to come visit. And he was actually willing to do it. And then he got back to me and said he was already booked at Exotica in Chicago um, for Chatterbait. And those of you who knew Dave, Dave was very professional and loved Chatterbait. Chatterbait I got him into the industry. Chatterbait was his bread and butter. So I understood when he was like, I'll go, I'll go. I get it. Um, I even made a bad joke, and I, I look back at this kind of regretting it. Um, I told him that he should come to D.C. because no one wants him there anyway. The straight people don't want him there, so he should just come here. It's gay pride. We love him. Um, he'll have fun. He'd be safe. Um, but he went to Chicago. <sighs> Ironically, um, I got a text message from Dave on, I think it was Friday? For Thursday or Friday, that Exotica. He texted me and said, here, I'll read it to you. Uh, he texted me and said, Billy, I think I should have come to D.C. Now, I have the chills typing that because those are the last words Dave ever said to me. And 
I didn't respond to him. Um, as the weekend progressed, um, I was partying hard in D.C. It was gay pride. Um, we had had a few gay bashings since Trump took office in D.C. So this gay pride was a little different. It had a little a liberation feel to it. So we were all out celebrating and having a blast. And, you know, one thing I do, I'm in the habit of doing, is when I'm out dancing or even when I'm at live shows or gigs, I don't have my cell phone on me. I keep it off or I keep it in a bag. I keep it away. Um, I like to be present. Um, call me old school. I don't know. Well, after the nice late Saturday night, I got into the Uber and I turned my phone on and I had 20 plus messages just have you talked to Dave? Can you get a hold of Dave? No one can get a hold of Dave. And I laughed and I was like, cause I know Dave and Dave probably just turned his phone off wanting to be left alone. You know, just, and I said, just leave him alone. He's at Chicago having a good time. Leave him alone. Don't bother him. And then I got a call an hour, a few hours later from my friend, Amy telling me they found his body and that he had killed himself. And, you know, oh man, I lost it. I lost it. I was angry. I had been, I was so angry because it wasn't what everyone was saying. I knew what it was. And everyone was telling me I was stupid and it wasn't that and that I shouldn't blame. But I saw it all. I saw the messages. I saw how he I saw how he was feeling. He texted me the day he got there and was like, I should have come to DC. Well, I broke down. I was crying uncontrollably and I was angry and I was like wanted to beat up every straight person to, to, to see how it feels to be attacked just for who just for who you are I was mad and I took the to Twitter too and maybe I wasn't right to do that but I'm not wrong I was right that that's why that they're the cause of it I wasn't wrong Well, I got back to my apartment finally later that night and I was emotionally drained. I just laid down on the floor crying. My boyfriend was with me and Nick Sahara is a newcomer. He was with me too. We were in town. I brought him to DC the film and no one could tell me anything. Like No one could console me. I was so upset. I was worried about Katie. Like, like I was worried about his dog. I ended up taking a pill to go to sleep because I couldn't calm down. And I woke up the next morning and was just hoping it was a nightmare. Like it was a nightmare. And I grabbed my phone. For some reason I was on the couch. I grabbed my phone and I saw it wasn't a nightmare. It was true. And the first thing I did was I, I got up and I rushed over to my ex-husband's apartment um, Seth Santoro and I was a mess I apologized to him for our marriage I apologized for mistreating him I apologized for being controlling I apologized for making him feel less of a human I apologized for everything because I didn't want to lose him I couldn't lose another person and if someone you love so much can make you feel that way, imagine what some random hater makes you feel like. So Seth gave me a hug. 
and he always does quiet give me a hug told me to go back home and get some rest turn my phone off make the day about me and I did I, I I'm not gonna lie, I took a Xanax and went to sleep. And I slept, and I slept, and I slept. And I didn't want to wake up. But I did, I woke up. I got on my flight to Vegas, and I filmed porn. And then I worked, and then I worked, and then I dodged phone calls from my friends asking me if I'm okay. I didn't want to talk about it. I ignored every text about Dave. I didn't want to talk about it. I had built this shell around me that if I don't have to deal with it, I can I can keep going. And I don't know if I was ready to do this today, but I got a call from a friend of mine. Everyone made me feel crazy for my assertions about this. Everyone made me feel crazy that Dave was a drug addict. Dave, Dave just tried to get high and killed himself. It makes me mad, everyone that says that, because it's not fucking true. Yes, he was an addict who was sober for fucking years, who had a lot going for him. He did not one day get up and say, I need a fix. That's not what fucking happened. And everyone tried to make me feel crazy for that. That's not what happened. What happened was Dave Slick was not straight. Dave Slick was bisexual. Dave Slick was a sexual minority who was bullied and bashed repeatedly until he took his own life. That is what happened. But what bothers me more than anything is why it's okay to call out. Do you remember that one porn star, what was her name? August Ames. Do you remember a guy named Jackson Wheeler called her out for her homophobic remarks? And then she killed herself because she couldn't handle it? Do you remember that? Everyone attacked Jackson. Jackson got blackballed in the industry. Can't work anywhere. People won't shoot him. Got banned from the AVNs. Do you remember that? Remember that? Where is everyone upset about those who harassed Dave Slick? Why, is, why aren't people blackballing the performers who wouldn't work with him? Where's all the outrage there? There's none. Oh, he was just a drug. It was just a drug. He killed himself. No. It wasn't. But I'll tell you why. Because through my years in porn... And my relatively short experience on the straight side, um, and my friendships with certain straight performers and crossover performers, homophobia and hate are the seeds that flourish on the straight side. And I don't know whether it's just because these small town girls move to the city and sell their pussy. I don't know if that's it. So they come from the Trump small towns. Maybe that's why. They're uneducated. I don't know. I'm making general statements here, but there's got to be a reason why. Or is it just the fact that exactly what the APAG union said to me? Anyone who works in gay porn is high risk. We all have AIDS. So maybe they think that he's just given AIDS to their women. I don't know. But the fact is, the straight side of the industry harassed Dave Slick till he killed himself. And you know what? I don't see that changing in my lifetime. It's not going to change. I just hope, and I'm going to say that this is where I'm going to leave it at, I just hope to God that the next person who kills themselves because of hate isn't someone you love. Because it's a shitty feeling. <laughs>